Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we're diving into the innovative world of Rework, a game changing business book by Jason Fried and David Heinemeyer Hansen, a radical collection of disruptive strategies and unorthodox advice. Rework challenges the traditional notions of running a business. It is packed with enriching insights on a range of topics, from enhancing productivity to effective communication and pioneering product development. The authors, Jason Fried and David Heinemeyer Hansen, are both successful entrepreneurs and thought leaders in the tech industry. Fried, an original founder of 37 Signals, a leading web development company, pairs his business acumen with Hansen's technical expertise. Hansen, a partner at 37 Signals and the creator of the widely used Ruby on Rails programming framework, has not only helped shape the company's impactful products, but has also contributed significantly to the digital landscape, powering platforms like Twitter and Hulu, among many others. Rework presents lessons learned from the author's journey in establishing, running, and growing their company to a multi-million dollar enterprise. Each nugget of wisdom, each unconventional approach, is an exploration of their real-life experiences, a testament to their success story. This book is an invaluable asset for anyone who has ever contemplated starting their own company. For those interested in understanding the nuances of modern work culture in the 21st century, and for those on a quest to create an environment that stimulates productivity and fosters innovation. So, join us today as we delve into rework and unlock unique strategies for business success. Rework, unorthodox advice for growing companies. Introduction, a lean startup. Why less is actually more when launching your business. Beginning your own venture is a task that has become considerably simpler in recent times. If you're starting modestly, you'll find that it requires significantly fewer resources and less time than you might anticipate. Instead of jumping in with both feet, explore your options gradually. There's no need to ditch your nine, five job and devote every waking hour to your budding enterprise. Carve out a couple of hours each week to fine-tune your idea. This not only safeguards your regular income, but also enables you to assess your commitment and passion for your brainchild. Shy away from acquiring exorbitant loans. Make do with the assets and tools you already possess or can procure without straining your finances. External investment should be the very last avenue you consider, as it would not only diminish your share in the venture, but hunting for financial backers is a tedious and distractive ordeal. In most instances, your laptop and your brain power are your most valuable assets. The rest is secondary to your road to triumph. While you're in the process of carving out your enterprise, funnel your energy into designing the foundation of your venture. This heart, or core, is the lifeblood of your business. Without it, your venture is a shell. Consider a hot dog stand. Without hot dogs, It's just an empty cart. This core should be a sturdy element that is resilient to the test of time. Take Amazon, for instance. Its core isn't solely books. It's speedy delivery, budget-friendly pricing, and a vast array of items. The world of publishing may be susceptible to trends, but these are aspects customers will consistently be ready to splurge on. The moment your core is firm and ready to go, launch without a second's hesitation. You don't need to have every single component of your venture in place. The finer details can be ironed out as you progress. Case in point, when 37 Signals first introduced its Basecamp product, they didn't even have a system for billing their customers. But thanks to their monthly billing cycle, they had a four-week window to rectify this. The key is to dive in and improvise along the way. Embrace the mantra that less is indeed more when it comes to launching your own enterprise. The moment your core is ready, set sail on your entrepreneurial journey. Part 1. Take a stand. Fuel your business with passion and purpose. To fuel the kind of passion and relentless drive needed to run a flourishing company, you must be doing something that genuinely resonates with your heart. 
If you're going to invest your time and effort into building something, ensure it's a venture you can stand behind with pride. Approaching your business with the mindset of planning an exit strategy from the get-go is as absurd as entering a relationship with the intention of ending it. Just like any significant relationship, cultivating a business should be rooted in dedication and fervor, not in an ever-present readiness to sell out at the next best opportunity. Taking a stand for what matters to you serves as a powerful magnet to attract a loyal and dedicated fan base. Let's consider the case of Vinny's Sub Shop in Chicago. They cease selling sandwiches in the afternoon because the bread isn't as fresh as it was in the morning. They're willing to forego the additional afternoon revenue, as it pales in comparison to the blow their pride would take if they sold subpar sandwiches. This unwavering commitment to quality has endeared them to their customers. Once you've found your stance, one effective strategy to accentuate it is by picking a bone with a rival competitor. Say you own a quaint coffee shop that serves as a sanctuary for individualists. Position yourself as the antithesis of Starbucks. Having a foe not only gives you a clear standing in the customer's perception, but it also provides a riveting narrative to weave your brand story. However, steer clear from letting your rivals dictate your business strategy. If your goal is merely to mimic the iPhone 5 or counter it, you're destined to be stuck perpetually lagging behind your competition. Instead, zero in on what you're doing rather than obsessing over the moves of others. In a nutshell, find your purpose and ardently stand up for it. It's the best fuel for your entrepreneurial journey. Part two, infuse your product with uniqueness, a strategy for sharing without fears of imitation. In the world of business, success inevitably attracts copycats. Your primary defense against this is to craft a product so deeply infused with your unique qualities, it becomes practically impossible to replicate. Look at Tony Hsieh, the CEO of Zappos. His unwavering dedication to customer service led him to make it the central ethos of his company. Other footwear retailers may sell the same brands as Zappos, but they're unable to emulate the extreme commitment to customer satisfaction that Xie embodies. One of the best ways to identify your unique qualities is to create a product or service that you personally would want to use. Case in point, track coach Bill Bowerman yearned for lighter running shoes for his athletes. In the pursuit of this, he ended up pouring rubber into his waffle iron, giving birth to Nike's iconic waffle sole design. The norm is often that customers have high expectations for the products they purchase, only to be disappointed by the actual delivery. Ensure your product subverts this pattern. Make it so effortless and intuitive that users fall in love with it, surpassing their initial expectations, and can't help but spread the word among their circles. If you can accomplish this, you can market your product akin to a drug dealer. Hook users with a free sample, confident that they'll gladly return for more. When your product possesses an undeniable uniqueness that keeps customers hooked, you can freely share your knowledge without fear of spawning imitators. Like renowned chefs who share their coveted recipes in cookbooks as a means of promoting themselves, you too can publicize your business by openly sharing your experiences and specialized knowledge. Even better, become an educator. Create how-to guides, courses, and video tutorials. In a landscape where most companies, especially larger ones, guard their knowledge jealously, offering free education can give you a significant competitive edge. Bottom line, infuse your product with a unique character, allowing you to share your insights freely without fear of imitation. Part 3. Embrace the advantages of being small, but never lose sight of your business goals. Many fledgling startups yearn for the scale and recognition larger counterparts enjoy, but bigger isn't invariably better. Take prestigious institutions like Harvard or Cambridge as examples. It's highly doubtful that their aspirations involve sprawling campuses globally to educate hundreds of thousands of students every year. Instead, they embrace their compact size. And this is a lesson for small businesses too. For instance, having less mass and flying below the media's radar offers the liberty to experiment with your business model. 
without the threat of any potential blunders being broadcasted to the world. Much like Broadway musicals, are initially tried out in smaller cities. Before hitting the big stage in New York, you should harness your early obscurity to test out various ideas and methodologies. The small scale of your business also lets your entire team stay on the forefront of your operations, directly engaging with customers, hearing their needs and feedback. A convoluted hierarchical structure can dampen this feedback and impede your pace. If each team member is accountable for customer satisfaction, your business can swiftly address any issues, a crucial factor in delivering exceptional customer service. However, despite starting small, it's critical not to lose sight of the fact that you're operating a business. There are countless startups residing in a fantastical world where they freely spend investors' money with little regard for profitability. In reality, These companies are more akin to expensive hobbies for their founders rather than legitimate businesses. If your goal is to create a thriving business, it's crucial to have a clear path to profitability etched out right from the get-go. In conclusion, cherish the benefits of starting small, but always remember that your ultimate aim is to run a successful business. Part 4. Embrace minimalism. Say no more often to maintain a lean product. When renowned chef Gordon Ramsay steps in to salvage failing restaurants on his TV show, Kitchen Nightmares, his strategy invariably begins with slicing away nearly two-thirds of the menu items. This principle can be aptly applied when addressing issues with your product. Consider trimming features rather than piling on more. If the goal is to create something exceptional, you have to chisel away anything that's merely good. Embrace limitations, much like Ernest Hemingway did. He penned Nobel-winning literature, employing starkly minimalistic language. Similarly, you can craft a fantastic product or service, armed with just a handful of core features. Don't fall into the trap of trying to outdo competition by stuffing your product with an array of features. Focus on delivering fewer features, simplifying your product, and enhancing usability. Drive value by making conscious decisions about what you shouldn't include. Think about the world's best art galleries. They don't exhibit every single work of art available, but carefully curate their displays. You should also eliminate the clutter and vouch for whatever remains. However, maintaining this simplicity isn't a walk in the park. As your customer base grows, you'll inevitably encounter an influx of requests for product enhancements, both from customers and internal team members. Resist the urge to immediately respond to these demands by tweaking your product or incorporating new features. If you succumb, you risk bloating your product beyond recognition, potentially alienating new customers who find the product changes overwhelmingly tailored to cater to existing users. Exercise the power of saying no, even to the most tempting ideas initially. If a request is genuinely crucial, it will resurface consistently enough that you can't overlook it. To sum it up, remember that less is often more. Nurture the habit of saying no to sustain a lean, efficient product. Part 5. Avoid emulating large corporations in your outreach efforts. Strive for authenticity, personal touch, and agility. There's absolutely nothing amiss with allowing your communication to genuinely reflect the scale of your company. Take pride in your small size that lets you engage in honest, jargon-free conversations, a stark contrast to the obscure, buzzword-laden press releases from major corporations. For instance, instead of saying, transparency is a key pillar of our communication strategy, simply state that you're committed to honesty. Investing in advertising and aggressive marketing can be costly routes to connect with customers. Instead, Cultivate an audience by offering valuable content that they willingly engage with and come back for, a strategy that helps grab their attention without shelling out a penny. In a compact organization, marketing isn't a departmental responsibility. It's everyone's business. Every email, phone conversation, blog post, and social media update serves as a marketing tool, strengthening your bond with customers. Why not invite your customers to catch a glimpse of the -the behind-the-scenes workings of your company? Let them familiarize themselves with you and your team. When you're aiming for media coverage, 
prioritize niche outlets over mainstream ones. A feature in a niche, well-targeted blog or magazine can yield significantly more website traffic and sales than an article in a renowned newspaper. It also enables you to reach out to journalists with personalized messages, as opposed to impersonal, blanket press releases. The connection you foster with customers is bound to navigate some rough waters, and straightforward communication involves being candid about your flaws and failures too. People aren't fond of businesses that attempt to brush issues under the carpet. When you have bad news to share, SU corporate sounding, lukewarm apologies like, we apologize for any inconvenience this may have caused you. Instead, consider what kind of apology you, as a customer, would appreciate. In essence, avoid mimicking the outreach strategies of giant corporations. Remain authentic, personable, and nimble. Part 6. Foster an atmosphere where individuals take charge of themselves and engage in open communication. Treating your team like they're incapable can foster a dependent, non-productive behavior. You will find yourself spending a majority of your time managing them and making decisions for them. This can quickly lead your team into becoming passive, accomplishing far less while consuming your time and energy. What you need are team members who can confidently manage themselves, and these individuals flourish in work settings where trust, responsibility, and independence are emphasized. A hallmark of such an environment is straightforwardness in communication. Shun ambiguity and complex, overarching explanations. Be concrete and show your team exactly what you mean. Instead of confining problem-solving sessions to meeting rooms, walk up to the actual root of the problem. Understand it firsthand. Feedback should be just as transparent. If your team is too large and unacquainted with each other, the discussions may seem stifled. You need clear, honest communication within your team to ensure that impractical ideas get duly critiqued. Moreover, there are certain terms that you should consciously avoid during intra-team communication. Consider a scenario where you're tasked with an uphill challenge and someone condescendingly tells you, we can't get by without this, it should be a breeze for you. It hardly leaves any room for a dialogue, does it? Harsh, judgmental words like need, must, can't, and only can quickly choke any prospects of constructive conversation. And let's banish the term ASAP from our communication when requesting someone to do something. This term has lost its urgency due to overuse and inadvertently devalues the urgency of other non-ASAP requests. In a nutshell, strive to cultivate an atmosphere where individuals take charge of themselves and communicate candidly with one another. Part 7. Avoid excessive planning. Maintain agility with swift and adaptable decisions. As a compact company, one of your primary advantages over large arrivals lies in your capability to take prompt decisions, bypassing the bureaucratic hurdles. Begin embracing the mantra, let's decide, as opposed to, let's ponder over it. Stop chasing perfection, aim for good enough swiftly, and sustain your momentum. Resist the temptation to overthink or overplan, unless you possess a future-telling crystal ball. Planning and estimating are pretty much grounded in speculation. Adhering too strictly to your plans, presuming their accuracy, can stifle your capacity to improvise, and that's a risky path. Rather, embrace the art of improvisation. Make decisions in the moment instead of charting them way ahead. Keep your focus on the immediate week, not the distant future. Small, reversible decisions that work in the present are much easier to make than monumental, life-altering ones fraught with long-term implications. Likewise, refrain from making sweeping estimates like, this year-long project will cost us around a million dollars. To achieve any degree of precision, break your estimates down into more digestible segments, thinking in terms of weeks instead of years. This way, the fallout of incorrect estimations will be considerably less impactful. Lastly, when faced with a decision, don't be overwhelmed by potential pitfalls. Every decision carries its set of possible downsides, but most of these can be managed when they actually materialize, though most never will. 
To summarize, steer clear of excessive planning. Remain agile with swift and adaptable decisions. Part 8. Efficiency stems not from lengthy work hours, but focused effort and swift victories. Many often mistakenly associate productivity with extended working hours. Contrarily, the most efficient employees usually have engaging lives outside their jobs and strive to wrap up their workday by five. Individuals who habitually overstay can inadvertently harm the overall efficiency of the company by making the rest feel guilty and depleting their motivation. The starting point of maintaining high efficiency at work involves eliminating disruptions that shatter concentration. Assure your team has a designated time during the day or week when interruptions are off limits. Undoubtedly, the most damaging interruption is a meeting. A one-hour meeting involving 10 people effectively costs at least 10 collective hours of work time. While this may be justified in rare instances, meetings frequently lack objectives, agendas, and any significant linkage to actual tasks. In essence, they typically generate more discussion than action. Perfectionism is another roadblock to productivity. Getting entangled in complicated issues, attempting to carve out flawless solutions, can devour weeks' worth of effort. Often, a speedy fix would suffice. To truly enhance productivity, aim for solutions that maximize effectiveness with minimal effort. More often than not, good enough trumps perfect. One approach to foster this non-perfectionistic mindset is to break down massive projects and tasks into smaller segments and to-do lists. This not only makes intricate tasks more manageable, but also provides more occasions to celebrate along the journey as minor milestones are attained. These rapid victories help to keep the momentum and motivation alive. In essence, efficiency isn't a derivative of long work hours, but rather arises from dedicated work and swift victories. Part 9. Only recruit when truly needed. An overlook resumes. Rely on your gut feeling. Certain companies have a proclivity for hiring employees. They come across an exceptional candidate and make a decision to recruit them, even in the absence of a specific role or designation. This is usually the onset of complications. When you bring someone on board, it should be to address an immediate issue that's inflicting considerable distress on your company. Retaining a trim team as long as possible will compel you to embrace time-efficient approaches and a culture of efficiency. Conversely, hiring superfluous staff, regardless of their brilliance, only results in vexation and the generation of insignificant contrived tasks to occupy them. You might fear missing out on once-in-a-lifetime recruits, which could be a valid worry if your candidate pool is limited. However, if you're open to hiring staff from around the globe, you will continually find more impressive talent. Almost everyone can work remotely nowadays, rendering the geographic location of your employees virtually inconsequential. When you do find yourself hiring, steer clear of the conventional recruitment dogma of scrutinizing resumes, GPA scores, and years of experience. Instead, rely on your intuition and focus on what the candidates have genuinely learned to do due to their past experiences. Finally, test your prospective employees. No interview process can give you a true picture of how a person will actually perform on the job, but assigning them a small project will allow you to assess them based on their actions, not their words. BMW even created a faux assembly line for recruiters to observe potential employees in action. To enhance this on-the-job testing, always recruit individuals for tasks that you have personally handled at some point. This not only facilitates better assessment, but also aids in their subsequent management. To sum it up, only recruit when truly needed and overlook resumes. Rely on your gut feeling. Final summary. The principal takeaway from this book, embarking on and managing a business, is far simpler in today's world than it has ever been. For a successful enterprise, infuse your distinctiveness into your product and leverage the advantages of remaining small. Cultivate a remarkable work environment by fostering trust, autonomy, and focus. The queries this book resolved. How can you swiftly kickstart your business? 
it takes less than you assume to establish your own company. Take off as soon as the essence of your business is primed. Take a stand for something you truly care about. Render your product unique, allowing you to disclose everything you are aware of. How can you exploit your small size to your benefit? Appreciate the perks of being small, but remember, you are running a business. Less often equates to more. Begin declining and retain your product lean. Don't imitate large corporations in your marketing and communication strategies. Be truthful, personal, and agile. What is the modern approach to establishing and managing a business? Construct an environment where individuals manage themselves and communicate with each other candidly. Avoid over-planning. Stay agile with swift and adaptable decisions. Efficiency doesn't spring from long working hours but from focused work and rapid victories. Recruit individuals only when utterly necessary and ignore resumes. Rely on your instincts. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then, happy reading and happy listening.